Welcome to the next step of our uh, Mozilla Development Network tutorial. Now we're going to switch from that first site just to, that sort of made sure we were installed properly and start developing a real site. But we're not going to put any content in it. We're just going to sort of set things up. So let's go ahead and get a uh, Python Anywhere uh, shell going here. Uh, start a bash shell. Now I'm going to say here she comes. Work on Django 2. Because I started a new shell, this to make sure I'm in my right virtual environment, basically. And so then what we're going to do is I'm going to go into that folder, the Django Projects folder. I'll do an ls, and I have a subfolder named Test Site. If I do an ls minus la, you'll see that I have a, a GitHub repo and my git ignore file. And um, these three suffixes are what I want to ignore as I create files. So um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start a new project. So remember, their projects are big things. That's why I call this folder Django Projects. And so now I have local library. And I'm going to go to local, go into local library. And then I'm going to start an application called the library catalog. So I have this, I, <clears throat> there is, it's weird because I'm in local library as the, as the project, but there's sort of the global settings for it or in local library and then each app. There'd be multiple apps. This is sort of like the settings for the global library. So at this point, I've got a bunch of new files um, and I can take a look. If I've been doing Git, Git of course is optional, but I've been doing Git with this. So I'm going to do Git status. And this basically means the entire current folder is um, is new to Git. Git hasn't seen it. We created all the folders in local libraries. So we, we can say git add. We're going to put these in so we can track our changes. Git add dot. And let's go ahead and say git status to make sure I got that right. So all these files are about to be put into GitHub. And git commit. I'm going to say, let's add a message here. Skeleton starting. So there you are. Uh, and then we are going to um, push them. My GitHub account is CSEV. I'll go over here and get my password. And now it's been pushed up. So I take a look in my Git repo, and I can see that this new local library, and I can see the commits. I actually had one extra commit here. So this local library was this new stuff. That's all the files that I just created. Now we're going to make some changes here, right? And so I wanted to change it so I can use GitHub sort of to help myself track what I'm changing. And this is the nice thing about GitHub. So if I do git status, it's, we're all caught up. Everything's fine. So we got a couple of things that we've got to do. Um, the local library settings py. And I'll use nano here. We have to allow the all URLs to the allowed hosts. This has to do with who can make requests to our application. And then we have to add a new line here because we just installed the application. This this um, this catalog application that we just installed. So we're going to have to add this line to sort of connect in. You'll see we'll do this a lot. And so then we made those two changes. And I'm going to Control X. Yes. Control, Control X. Oh, and then Enter. So that saves it. So I've made that. Now you can see get diff. This is cool with GitHub. And you can see what I did. I, I took out this line and replaced it with this one, and I did that. So this is a way for me to kind of verify that I made all my things. And so um, Git is tracking the changes. That's what it does. So now I'm going to edit this fi file local library URLs. And this, this basically routes various URLs. Ooh, I'll use a VI for this one. So I'll go down to the bottom here, and I'll use the open command. That was the O. And then I'm going to paste these new things it tells me to put in. I've got to put this. 
there are two things accomplished here. We're going to have the catalog application where do URL, what's called URL routing in there. And then the slash is going to get redirected to slash catalog. And you'll see that in a bit. I hit escape, hit colon WQ. You probably want to use nano for this, but I just use VI. And so now I've accomplished this part and I can do another get diff. And so you can see these are the changes I made here to set this file. And then you can see the changes that I made into the URLs file. So I just added some lines at the end. That's what we did. Hit Q to get out of the get diff. The next thing we do is we edit a whole new file, catalog urls.py. This is a new file. Nano catalog urls.py. Boop. And we are just going to paste this bit. And now in the next steps, we're going to add, actually add some routing for the various URLs of our catalog application. But for now, we're just going to leave that alone. We're just going to put this in as a placeholder. And control X, yes, write that file. If I do a get status, you can see I've changed two files and I've added one new file. Now, it may not be necessary to do these right now, but we might as well go ahead and get our empty database created make migrations, sort of scans through all the models of which we, there are some built-ins, but we've not built any new ones. And then migrate creates a database. So that's creating a bunch of tables inside of our database. And this database is we're using SQLite and so it lives in SQLite 3. Now, if I do a get status, you don't see, this is an additional file, but because it's in our git ignore cat, dot dot slash dot get ignore remember that file it says ignore files that end in swap pycache or start.sqlite 3 so we made this file but it's not going to get checked into github so there's a so that's what the get ignore file is for is to have those things that um, you don't put into github it's a way to say please don't put you force them in if you want okay so let's continue on so now we're going to go into the web tab of python anywhere open that in a new tab go to the go into the open web tab and so here we are in the web tab now these were these the source code working directory and wigs configuration files were from our previous one so we got to change these and instead of saying my test site we say local library I like that one and instead of my test site we say local library so we're switching from the my test site to the local one. And this here is the, this WSGI configuration is the sort of the master router. And we can say that we have to change local, change local library twice. Oops. Local library and local library. And then I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to the web tab. So let's just kind of verify that these all look pretty good. We're still using the same virtual environment. That's We didn't change that. That's just our Django, basic Django installation. This is where our Django application file. So this looks pretty good. So then we're going to uh, reload it. See how long it takes. So now, if all goes well, we should be able to open this in a new tab. Yep, so it's trying to find this. It redirected us. There was a, a thing there that caused this redirect to happen. This little guy right there meant that we went to slash. If we go to slash without catalog, it's going to redirect us to slash catalog. But then because of the fact that there's nothing here in catalog urls.py, we sort of don't have anything so it's okay. So this, this isn't a very functional application, but this is the application that you have at the end of the first skeleton. So we're in pretty good shape. We've done this, we've done this, we've hit reload, we went to it, there we're in good shape. So now let's, we've got these GitHub. Let's go back into our bash console. So I'm gonna go up one folder. This is the 
this is Django projects and we do a get status here and we see that um, this <clears throat> we've made the change local library settings file and we've added this so we're gonna I'm gonna say get add this file get status and so I'm gonna do another commit get commit minus M minus a minus M after skeleton and I'm gonna say get push to upload it and away we go so that if we now go look at our Django projects we've got four commits and we can see that the we from the time we started the skeleton to the end of the skeleton we can see the files that were changed that's kind of nice we added this file we made this change and then we had appended this to the end of this local library so this github is great as a way to allow us to keep track of our stuff and if we make mistakes we're like what what did we do before so it might not be as clean with only four commits we might have to sort of futz around but github is really really quite useful and the last thing that we might want to do is do what's called a tag so each of these commits each of these commits has its separate like ID but we can sort of tag a moment in time and give it a special name and so I'm gonna get say get tag skeleton and then I'm gonna push that tag up push origin minus minus tags and that's gonna shove the tag up into github itself and now if I go looking here we're gonna see that there's one release and that release is at skeleton so this is like we'll have a bunch of these they'll be sort of there's there's moments in time so I've tagged this one now again it's nothing different we've just got four commits right it's this one here but tagging allows us to see you know to name moments in time to make releases naming moments in time and so we name this guy skeleton and away you go so so up next we're going to uh, Go on to the next where we're going to actually put a little more interesting content into this website, okay?